the change in the architecture of the media is completely connected to a change in the architecture of control. You know, with the broadcast system, you have one person in one station deciding what gets put over the airwaves. When you have a distributed network like the internet, everybody can be a server. There's no distinction between the broadcaster and the receiver. Every computer does both. You know, you can take your home laptop and run a server off of it that can distribute movies and music and web pages and email in the same way that the biggest computers at Google can. There's no fundamental difference between the computers they have in the racks in their server rooms and what you have on your desk. In the old system of broadcasting, you're fundamentally limited by the amount of space in the airwaves. You know, you could only send out 10 channels over the airwaves of television, right? Or even with cable, you had 500 channels. On the internet, everybody can have a channel. Everyone can get a blog or a MySpace page. Everyone has a way of expressing themselves. And so what you see now is not a question of who gets access to the airwaves. It's a question of who gets control over the ways you find people. You know, you start seeing power centralizing in sites like Google, these sort of gatekeepers that tell you where on the internet you want to go, the people who provide you your sources of news and information. So it's not, you know, only certain people have a license to speak. Now everyone has a license to speak. It's a question of who gets heard. So one of the biggest questions we're facing is in a world of a million speakers, how do you find what's good? Are we going to go to a system like the old media where you go to CNN and they pick a handful of people to focus on and you read what they say? Or are we going to go something more like the internet where everybody has a chance at being heard, a more democratic system? One of the most interesting technologies for doing something like that is a system called collaborative filtering where everybody expresses their opinions on what they like and what they don't like and the computer tries to match you up with other people who have similar preferences and recommend you things that they also like that you didn't know about before. It's the same kind of system you see on Amazon with people who bought this book also bought this book. People are trying to experiment that not just with books but with blogs and with web pages and news stories all across the internet to try and find ways of things you never would have heard of before and bringing them in front of you. Well, mass media had this fundamental paradox because it was aiming at a huge audience but it wanted to convince everybody they were an individual so you see all these ads on television all the time, like, you know, buck the trend, buy these jeans, right? And it's on a show that four million people are watching. You know, you're not going to buck a trend by doing the same thing four million other people are. Now that the internet is actually making these niche things possible, you know, the mass media is incredibly threatened. You know, no longer this idea of bucking the crowd and being your own is, you know, it's no longer just a theory. You can actually do it on the internet. And what we're starting to see is tools that take power away from these big conglomerates and start to distribute it to small groups. And so there are a bunch of issues in, in a system like that. There are questions of funding, you know, how will these small groups get paid? How will the random blogger be able to live, you know, in a way that an investigative journalist can now because there's one giant source of advertising? You know, there are questions of finding people. You know, how will I be able to find the stuff I'm interested in, the stuff that's trustworthy and reliable? And so for each of these, you know, there are new technologies. People are trying all sorts of different things. And one of the most exciting things about the internet is that there's experimentation in this. You know, since everybody can just go up and start a website with a new piece of technology to try and solve one of these problems, we're seeing lots of different possibilities, lots of different funding models, lots of different, you know, recommendation systems. And who knows what will work best, you know? We have a chance to try it all and see what falls out. So there are a couple of interesting funding models. One, of course, is the sort of standard method of advertising, right? You know, you go to a bunch of big corporate sponsors and instead of having them fund a television show, you have them fund your web page. But a more interesting one is you do the same thing with niche groups. Right? Instead of going to IBM or Ford or some big company and having them buy a banner ad on your site, you go to people who actually care about the readers you have. If you're a design weblog, you go to design companies. Right? If you're a politics weblog, you go to other politicians. You, so you have a very targeted, narrow group of people who are really interested in the subject. That's a group of and an audience that advertisers really love. Another possibility is to turn directly to your readers for support. So you see blogs say, you know, I want to go on a trip to New Hampshire to cover the American political conventions. You know, will you support me? And the readers pour in money. You know, these people are very dedicated. They feel like they have a personal connection with the person writing. So they are eager to spend money to support it. You know, another thing is that you work simply off of volunteer labor. You have people who have a day job, you know, that's an expert in the subject and they just enjoy talking about it. So they write stuff in their free time and publish it on the internet or they have readers who read their site and contribute stuff and it gets compiled into one exciting source. So I think there are lots of different experiments and people are trying lots of different ways. I mean, that's one of the errors you had with television, right, was that television could only provide one level of interest, right? You know, people watched advert, you know, it was funded based on advertising, not on how much people cared about the program. You know, advertisers were going to pay the same no matter how exciting or how compelling or how interested the audience was in the show. So what you ended up with was, you know, fairly boring shows that appealed to lots of people because 
that's what advertisers wanted. They wanted lots of people watching the shows. Whereas in a normal market economy, what happens is if you really want something, you pay more for it. You just can't do that with television. So one of the interesting things about broadcast is that a lot of what you like depends on what other people like, right? There are only so many shows out there. They're all kind of bland. And so what happens is you have these mega hits like American Idol or Lost, where you know everybody at the water cooler is talking about this show. And so you just have to watch it because otherwise you can't keep up with them. You know, you have the, whenever social factors get involved, you have this sort of process of rich gets richer. You know, one thing takes off because that's what everybody else is doing. One nice thing about the internet is that it allows for so much more variety that niche, niche products can get so much more attention and interest. So they've run the numbers and there's this proven mathematical fact that as long as some percentage of what you care about is whether other people like it or not, you're going to end up with these patterns of hits and failures. If you have two things which are equivalent in quality, and one of them is liked by one more person than the other one, you're going to go to that one. You know, There's some small chance that you're going to go to that one, and everybody's starting to start going to that one. And all of a sudden, you have Harry Potter, this one book plucked out of nowhere that suddenly becomes this humongous mega hit. Not because it's 100 million times better written than every other book, but simply because everybody's reading it. You know, And putting stuff on the internet doesn't change that. You still care about what your friends like. You still want to read what everybody else is talking about. You still want to do what's popular because you think maybe other people have a valid opinion or maybe you want to talk to them about it. Maybe you want to join part of this community. But whatever your reason is, as long as you care about other people's opinions, you're going to end up with these hits. You just have this social signifier that everybody cares about. Everybody's watching American Idol. It doesn't matter how good the show is. I mean, it has to be somewhat decent that people will watch it. But once everybody's watching it and everybody's talking about it, you know, it suddenly becomes this mega hit for no real reason. Right? just because it's a social phenomenon. And what television does is it chops off the tail. Right? It throws away all the other shows that people would like but don't care enough about to be mega hits and instead pours all of its money into these cheap to produce shows. Well, you can't get rid of hits. right? You know, It's a fact that people will want to do what their friends are doing. You can't avoid that. But what you can do is say there's a whole rest of the world out there. There's a whole rest of what people care about other than what everybody else is doing. Everybody has their own particular interests. Everybody has something that fascinates them. And what the internet does is it allows them to do that. It allows them to you know, get involved and find other people who share these things. One of the exciting things about Wikipedia is that it doesn't just have articles on the you know, 100 most popular things or the 1,000 most popular things. You can pick the most obscure subject on the world and there's an article about it. Because for everything, there's someone who cares a great deal about it. And that's what television, that's what radio doesn't provide, but the internet does. It provides a way for you to get in touch with those other people who rarely care about this completely obscure thing. So it's not, it doesn't just go in the direction of topic, it goes in the direction of time. You can go back in time and find all the shows that have been cancelled, find all the articles you know, that have been deleted. You can go back and find everything that's been lost in major culture and it's got a place on the internet. YouTube music videos from the 70s and 80s that you can't find anywhere these days, you can watch at your leisure. Yeah, I mean, I think lessening the power of the hits, you know, bringing down the things at the top and making it more egalitarian is something we should always strive for. It may be really difficult, it may not be super possible, but it's, you know, it's something to hope for, it's something to try for. And what that means is throwing away as much as possible all the things that give you hints about you, know, you should do this because other people like it. You know, it's very tempting when you're building a, a website or a programming system is to start sorting things that are really popular at the top. But all that does is it makes it less democratic and less fair. You, know, you have to have continual pressure to try and pull things from the bottom of the tail up, give everybody a chance to look at everything. And if you do that, you know, maybe you won't completely get rid of hits, but you can start to ameliorate some of their problems. I mean, that's one power of data mining, is it can start to find obscure subjects that you wouldn't have found simply because they're not popular. You know, one of the tools of recommendations can be to pull you to the less popular stuff down in the tail. The random article button on Wikipedia is really cool in this sense. You know, you can just wake up every day and read about some completely random topic that you'd never have heard of, except for the fact that there's an article in Wikipedia about it. And boy, are there some completely random topics. <laughs>